Well, friends, a storm rolled in to a New York City courtroom today. That's right, witness Stormy Daniels finally took the stand in Donald Trump's 2016 election interference trial. Let's talk about that because justice matters. Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. So friends, witness Stormy Daniels finally hit the stand in Donald Trump's criminal prosecution in state court in New York for criminally falsifying business records to cover up hush money payments he made to Stormy Daniels. Why? To gain unfair advantage in the 2016 presidential election. And when Stormy Daniels testified, Donald Trump and his criminal defense attorneys damn near lost their minds, insisting and demanding that Judge Mershon grant a mistrial. We're going to talk about that and what it tells us about just how damaging Stormy Daniels' testimony was to Donald Trump. But I want to start with some of the reporting. First, some of the reporting by the Business Insider, then some of the reporting by the New York Times, just so you get a flavor of what Stormy Daniels' testimony was like, starting with the Business Insider. Headline, Stormy Daniels, normally quick-witted and confident, described being scared, ashamed, and shaking after her night with Trump. And that article begins, the world is used to Stormy Daniels presenting herself confidently, proudly sharing in a book, on podcasts, and in a documentary, the nitty-gritty details of the sexual encounter she said she had with Donald Trump in 2006. On Tuesday, the jury in the former president's hush money trial saw a different side of her. On the stand, Daniels described feeling scared and ashamed after her night with Trump. On Tuesday, arch enemies Trump and Daniels, with a potential felony conviction at stake, faced each other for the first time in a decade at the former president's criminal hush money trial. Quote, my name is Stormy Daniels, the porn star at the center of the historic trial said, as she swore to tell the truth while at the witness stand of a Manhattan courtroom just 20 feet from Trump. Daniels, whose real name is Stephanie Clifford, wore black-rimmed glasses and an all-black, loose-fitting shirt and sweater as she took the witness stand. Trump sat at the defense table, his posture slightly slumped. He looked down at the defense table, not at Daniels, as she began her testimony. As he passed by pews of journalists in the courtroom, leaving and entering during breaks, Trump wore a furious scowl on his face. Under questioning from Susan Hoffinger, a prosecutor in the Manhattan District Attorney's Office, Daniel's testimony quickly moved to July 2006 when she met Trump at a celebrity golf tournament in Lake Tahoe and, later that night, wound up in the then-Apprentice Stars Penthouse Hotel Suite after accepting a dinner invitation. It was in that hotel suite where Daniels testified that she and Trump had sex, an allegation Trump vehemently denies. Speaking at a rapid clip, Daniels told the jury Trump greeted her at the door wearing satin or silk pajamas and that she immediately cracked a Hugh Hefner joke and asked him to change. Quote, you remind me of my daughter. You're blonde and beautiful, and people love seeing them on TV as well, Daniels recalled Trump telling her. Does that sound like Donald Trump to you? My editorial edition. The article continues. Daniels also told the jury that, at one point, Trump's wife and former first lady, Melania Trump, came up during their conversation He, Trump, said, 
oh, don't worry about that. We don't even sleep in the same room. Daniels testified. So friends, now let's shift over to some of the New York Times reporting about Daniels' testimony. Trump has claimed he had nothing to do with Stormy Daniels, just as he has nothing to do with any of the women who've made claims against him. But the cumulative testimony extracted from this line of questioning is that Stormy Daniels met with Trump on multiple occasions with dozens of witnesses. Daniels also describes multiple phone calls with Trump, some of which had witnesses, because Daniels says she put Trump on speakerphone for sport while her friends were present. The jury has also been shown phone contact logs from Daniels' phone and from Trump's assistance phone. Daniels says that while she didn't object in the moment, that is during the sexual encounter, she also didn't enjoy it, and that she felt there was an imbalance in the power dynamic between the two. Stormy Daniels says she asked Trump during their dinner, are you always this rude? Are you always this arrogant and pompous? Like, you don't even know how to have a conversation? Does that sound like Donald Trump? Stormy Daniels says that Trump took an interest in the business aspects of her industry and asked about unions, residuals, and health insurance, as well as about STD testing. You know, friends, if Stormy Daniels was just making up an encounter with Donald Trump, would she make up details about things like Donald Trump asking questions about the industry that she worked in, asking about unions, asking about residuals, asking about health insurance, and yes, asking about whether they were tested for sexually transmitted diseases, those just aren't the kind of details one would make up if they were fabricating an encounter out of whole cloth. But here's what I want to turn to now, friends, and I'm going to leave all the graphic details of her testimony about the moment of the encounter for you to read. It's everywhere online. If you want to read up on those details, I'm going to kind of leave that up to y'all. Here's what I want to shift to now. You know, well into Stormy Daniels' testimony, as it became more damaging and more damaging to Donald Trump, Donald Trump and his attorneys just sort of lost their collective minds, and they began complaining incessantly to Judge Mershon. Just stick with me here for a minute, friends. They began complaining furiously to Judge Mershon that they needed a mistrial. Why? Well, because... This testimony was so prejudicial, so harmful, so bad, so damaging to Donald Trump that we demand a mistrial. Judge Mershon promptly and summarily denied the motion for the mistrial. Why? Because none of this was legally improper or inadmissible evidence. But what did Donald Trump's defense attorneys highlight by the fact that they were arguing that Stormy Daniels' testimony was so bad, so harmful, so damaging to Donald Trump. They were highlighting the motive in the case. They were proving the point, indeed articulating it beautifully, that Donald Trump really had a reason to make hush money payments, to shut Stormy Daniels up and shut her down so she wouldn't tell what happened during the encounter, so she wouldn't reveal it. Why? So it wouldn't hurt his chances of being elected in the 2016 presidential election. Thank you, Donald Trump's attorneys, for making so clear why Donald Trump decided to pay Stormy Daniels $130,000 to hide, to bury, to conceal this deeply damaging evidence and information that Stormy Daniels could provide. And just a few more observations, friends. 
the very fact that Donald Trump entered into this corrupt scheme to have his lawyer and fixer, Michael Cohen, pay Stormy Daniels $130,000 out of his own pocket, and then Donald Trump went about reimbursing Michael Cohen by fraudulently representing that these $35,000 checks that Donald Trump kept writing to Michael Cohen out of his, Donald Trump's personal account were for you know legal services, part of a retainer arrangement, nonsense. They were fraudulent business records designed to cover up and deceive the true nature of these payments. But the very fact that Donald Trump arranged to make these payments to Stormy Daniels proves that he had an encounter with Stormy Daniels, right? Or else he would not have had to pay all of this money to shut up and shut down Stormy Daniels or arrange to have his friend, David Pecker, CEO of the National Enquirer, to make payments to Karen McDougal to shut her up and shut her down to hide that deeply damaging information that would have hurt Donald Trump's candidacy, right? I mean, it's pretty evident that Donald Trump had relationships and encounters with these women. And the jurors, I have to believe, will credit the testimony of Stormy, Stormy Daniels and Karen McDougal, and they will reject Donald Trump and his lawyers' attempts to persuade them that this is all made up. It's all just an absolute fabrication by these women. And once they conclude Donald Trump and, by proxy, his lawyers are basically misrepresenting the true nature of what happened here, that will color the jurors' perception perceptions of everything else Donald Trump and his lawyers try to claim, like Donald Trump didn't know why he was writing $35,000 check after $35,000 check out of his personal account. Donald Trump didn't know they were covering up fraudulently um, fabricating business records in violation of New York state law. Donald Trump didn't know anything. Yeah. That dog won't hunt, especially if it's Christy Nome's dog. Sorry. And I want to leave you with this, friends. The prosecution introduced evidence of Donald Trump's posts, his statements, calling Stormy Daniels horse face over and over again. Horse face, horse face, calling her a sleaze bag over and over again, mocking her. I don't even want to say in, you know, the kind of language you might expect from a, a sixth grader, because that would be insulting to sixth graders. They know better, for the most part. Do you really think it will endear, endear Donald Trump to the jurors that he repeatedly called Stormy Daniels horse face in his public statements, in his public posts? I don't think so. I think the jurors will draw all important conclusions about who Donald Trump is, what Donald Trump is about, and whether Donald Trump is guilty of the crimes with which he's been charged. And I think the jury will get it right. There's plenty of more evidence still to come. Karen McDougal, uh, Michael Cohen, and others. But I think the jury will get it right. Because justice matters. Friends, as always, please stay safe, please stay tuned, and I look forward to talking with you all again tomorrow.